and they hate on that. They basically hate on what they gave up on. And then they wonder why their spouses want to spend any time with them or their kids don't even know who they are or whatever else as they're spending time as a grown fucking man talking shit to some stranger on the internet. On What's up, freaks? Welcome to the Steve Eckert Podcast, episode number five. Today, we're talking about a very important topic of haters. Haters on the internet, but we're going to dive even more specifically into haters in the veteran, the military veteran community. Basically, veteran on veteran hate. It's it's like hate crimes on the internet. We're going to dive deep into that here on Steve Eckert's podcast, episode number five. The Steve Eckert Show is a podcast on how to flip the switch and have a no excuses, badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome, and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success, showing you how to operate to dominate in your mindset, your family, your fitness, your business, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own motherfucking terms while you create your own personal ideal freak freedom lifestyle. This is all about transforming men and women to get from where they are to where they want to be, need to be, and fucking deserve to be. So again, we're going on this here, episode number five, we're going into the haters. We're going to give the haters some freaking love. We're going to have some some fun stories of some haters and even some some internet. I'm going to give you some quotes of some internet hate we got. And and it's such a bad, a regular occurrence of the fucking keyboard warriors online that on, on our other podcast, Breaking the Cycle, that I do with the two freak show kids, we actually have a segment on there called Another Hit from the Nosebleeds. And that means we, we go into uh, the, the comments that we got recently on different posts of mine, and we break it down, and we talk about it. We tag the losers that put the, the comments, and there's some entertaining shit. So we're going to dive deep into some of those, give you some examples as, as we go along here on the Steve Eckert podcast. So I want to start off with a quote from Marcus Aurelius, and it's it's pretty funny that a dude 2,000 years ago in fucking robe, wearing a robe and sandals around town, was already prepared to deal with the haters on, on fucking Facebook and Instagram. Marcus Aurelius said, how much time one saves who does not look to see what their neighbor says or does or thinks? Like, holy shit. We're talking about a dude 2,000 years ago in a robe and sandals. I'm going to repeat that one. So you could, you could take some fucking notes on that. How much time one saves who does not look to see what their neighbor says or does or thinks. That's some real shit. So let's dive into some, some internet hate. I get told on the internet, I'm a fake Marine. I am a fake Marine. This is what I get told. I shouldn't even talk about being in the Marine Corps. I shouldn't even mention it here later in life that I was a Marine because I'm a fake Marine. Now, I want to go way back. One of my first mentors, when I first started going is becoming an entrepreneur and going out on my own and starting a business and opening up a gym and becoming a coach and a personal trainer. Also, my first mentor told me, listen, kid, if you want to make it in this game or any game, if you want to make it in any game where it requires you to put yourself out there, you need to have thick motherfucking skin. And I have lived by that. That's why mentorship and coaching is so important. That's why we, we have so many different coaching programs to help people out because coaching has such, had such a big impact on me. That's why I do OTD one-on-one coaching. That's why we have the LTD for, for companies and their teams where I travel around the country and coach their teams. And coaching has just had such a big impact on me. And that's all we do are different forms of coaching between the project and the squires and all these other programs. If you want to put yourself out there, you have to have thick skin. Like, holy shit. That has saved me literally, I don't even know, hundreds of hours of stress and anxiety and probably therapy sessions from that one little fucking golden nugget for one of my first mentors ever. And he was one of the originals way back. This we're talking almost 20 years ago. Originals of selling shit online. And he, imagine, and I can't imagine if he was selling his stuff online nowadays with the amount of hate. He was getting it back then before the internet was even that big. He was selling DVDs and all this other stuff online uh, on, as an internet marketer. 
and the hate was already coming then. So he, he gave me some drops, some bombs, some knowledge bombs of wisdom that has helped me throughout this time. Because listen, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to this coaching thing, when it comes down to helping people, like I said, to help people flip the switch to get from where they are and to get to where from they are now to where they want to be, need to be, and freaking deserve to be, like I said in the intro, I will do whatever the fuck it takes. I will be the bad guy. I have no problem being the bad guy. I can handle the shit. I can soak it in. I could take the shit that slung my way. I'm not that concerned about it because I've learned to develop through sets and reps to have that thick skin. Uh, I, I don't understand how these, it's usually grown men, and a, a lot of times it's not a, a, a secret that, or it's not a freaking coincidence that their, their, their social media profiles are usually blocked profiles, or they have no posts, or they have like 12 followers and they're following like 150 people with their, with their private accounts that, that spew all this hate and all this bullshit and drama and all this nonsense. But I don't know how they have time. These are grown fucking men, and, and we're going to talk specifically about military, grown men, veterans, and I don't, I don't know how they could possibly have fucking time in their life. And then they wonder why their life, they're not where they want to be in life. They wonder why they're not making enough money. And then they see some people that are actually doing something with themselves and actually making money and actually having a fulfilling life and actually spending time with their kids. And they hate on that. They basically hate on what they gave up on. And then they wonder why their spouses want to spend any time with them or their kids don't even know who they are or whatever else as they're spending time as a grown fucking man talking shit to some stranger on the internet, on someone else's, like literally going and searching and going onto someone else's page, someone else's place on the internet and talking shit. It's fucking crazy. So I want to give you one of the, one of the quotes. This is a good one. Uh, I'm going to give you word for word from one of the recent haters on the internet. And this was a military veteran. He said, you're such a fucking wannabe, bro. Bro, you're just an old man who didn't get to be a drill instructor. You started a big scam thinking you're changing lives, but in reality, you're a scam artist and a fucking boot. You think because you yell at civilians and call them idiots or some sort of David Goggins that people look up to, but in reality, you're just a fucking wannabe trying to live in the past. No different than a mom wearing her old high school letterman to her kids' football games. Not to mention, I already beat you by egging you into responding, you fucking pogue. A pogue is a P-O-G, a person other than grunt. So because I wasn't a grunt, I shouldn't, I'm a fake Marine. I shouldn't be talking about being in the military. I should be ashamed of being a veteran. And, and really, I'm going to go straight to the point here. Like shit like this coming from other veterans and seeing where other veterans lead themselves and, and the depression and the suicides and all this other PTSD and stuff that comes out of the military, it fucking breaks my heart. Seeing like these, these men who serve their country, when they get out, they just have no sense of purpose or higher calling and they lost their fucking way. It, it fucking breaks your heart when you see it. But this is what's out there and this is the kind of shit they're doing and then and they wonder why their fucking life is fucked up and they're pushing shopping carts in a Walmart parking lot for a living. And that's a true story because I've actually seen one like that. But this, this is, I get told that I should be ashamed of being in the Marine Corps because guess what? I was in the air wing. I scored a high score on my ASVAB test. I should, like, should I be ashamed of that? Should I not be a military veteran because I was in the air wing and I wasn't a grunt because I had high scores and I had a job that you needed some intellect and needed some smarts and knowledge and wisdom at a young age because I wasn't in war. I got out before even war started. So I told that I, I'm a draft dodger or whatever. They, they, people don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They did battle shit. But I got out actually before September 11th, 2001. Got out in February. And we did have to be on call and check in in case we were needed to be reactivated. I was in the air wing. I don't, they didn't, we didn't get called to get reactivated. But I did have to check in on a regular basis. So if this makes me, the, 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 I'm getting told this makes me a fake Marine. It's fucking crazy from other veterans. Like it's, it's a shame. It's, it's actually fucking despicable that this comes from other military veterans. That's, that's the, the, where they go to when they get out because they've again, lost that sense of purpose because they, they only knew that military lifestyle and they get out. They don't know what to do with themselves. They don't know how to monetize that. They don't appreciate the things that they probably learned, the, the leadership, the teamwork, the communication, the problem solving, the way to balance work and work life balance. 
that they learned while in the military and how they can use that to optimize, to dominate, to monetize their life now. And they see someone actually doing it who just because they were, weren't in the a grunt or whatever, and they're a pogue and whatever other little thing, you're a pogue, dude. Yeah, okay. People hate on what they gave up on. I get told I shouldn't be a coach because I wasn't a grunt. Now, that makes sense. Shit, I know some, some badass military veterans, some awesome dudes, some successful dudes who were not grunts. It's fucking wild. It's wild, mind-blowing, poof, mind-blowing shit right there. I get told I shouldn't be a leader of men or a leader of my family or a leader of my kids. I, sh- I, I shouldn't be allowed to use the word like, words like warrior because I was in the air wing in the Marine Corps. I, I get told I shouldn't be capable of making millions of dollars, and if any money I make, it must be a ripoff because I wasn't a grunt, and because since the grunt got out and didn't know what to do with themselves and lost their way, I shouldn't be able to go and make any money because apparently only grunts can make the money, but if the, they're not making money themselves and they're not successful themselves and not where they want to be themselves, it doesn't make any sense. Who's going to be making the money? Then you're just not allowed to? You got out of the military? You're just supposed to just... I don't know, live a life in the shadows, live a life lacking fulfillment. I get told I shouldn't be able to transform and coach tens of thousands of lives. Now, at this point, hundreds of thousands of lives that have been transformed through different coaching programs and training and gyms and all the in-person and online coaching that we do. I get told I shouldn't be able to be an instructor of the project. Now, the project is a personal development program that helps men become better husbands, fathers, leaders, and men. I get told I shouldn't be uh, an instructor of that because I was in the air wing. So apparently you can't be a man. Maybe that's the way it is. You can't associate with being a man. Maybe that, I don't know how it works these days. I get told I shouldn't be an instructor of the Squire program, which is a father-son in-person experience, a rite of passage that we call the Squire program. I told I shouldn't be able to be an instructor of that. I shouldn't be able to yell or voice my opinion. And of, of course I can't fight either because if you were, you weren't a grunt in the military, according to other military veterans that were, you're just a little bitch. You can't fight. But here's the funny thing. I've seen and actually myself have whooped. Whooped the asses of grunts. And I've also had my ass whooped by non-grunts. Amazing. Go to a jujitsu class, let's say. Is everyone in a jujitsu class? Every black belt where they are grunt? No, but I'm pretty sure they'll whoop most asses that come in that come their way. But apparently, you shouldn't, you, you can't fight, and you're just. You, I, I've been told I'll be get. They'll knock me out. They'll you know, Goldberg spear me. They'll bitch slap me if they ever see me in person. Because if you're in an air wing, you're just going to stand there and say, "Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Here, you could just slap me. And I'm just going to stand there and watch you. Give that a shot. See how that works out for you, there, pal. Give it a shot. I wasn't a grunt. I was in the air wing. I wasn't in war, so I'm a fake Marine, a pogue. But let me ask, what percent of military veterans are not grunts, are not in war? What percent? I get told I shouldn't be a patriot. I shouldn't even be proud to be an American. Like, I've had people literally tell me since I was in the air wing in the Marine Corps, and this is from other veterans, that I shouldn't even have these American flags in the background, or I shouldn't have the Marine Corps emblem, the Eagle Globe and, Old Globe and Anchor in the background. I shouldn't be able to wave a beautiful American flag at my home. I shouldn't be able to own guns and shoot guns. So if I go shooting with my family and we go shooting and we go to the range and I'm teaching my kids how to shoot, I shouldn't be able to teach my kids how to shoot because apparently if you weren't a grunt, you don't know how to shoot a gun. It's freaking weird. It's weird how that shit works. I shouldn't be allowed to feel awesome. And the thing is, again, most of this shit comes from haters on the internet. They hate on the shit that they're afraid to do. They hate on the shit they're afraid to say or what they're afraid to be. And it, it happens almost on a regular, regular basis. It's turned into almost a comical thing. It's given us so much content and so much things to talk about, so much fun. Like the, even that last post I just read, he says he already won because he egged me on to comment. So it's on my page. My page, I'm not going on someone else's page. This is not where it's happening. It's not like I'm going in there and interrupting their conversation about, 
I don't know, whatever they do in their life as they're associating with being a, 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 a boy or a girl or a fucking goat or something else. I'm not going in there and invading their stuff. They're coming on my page and making comments, and sometimes I'll respond to them. Sometimes it's you know the, the, the greatest invention that Mark Zanderberg or whatever that little fucking weasel that invented the, the Facebooks, the greatest invention he ever created was the block and delete button. Usually it's just block, delete, motherfucker, and move on and keep marching on and being fucking awesome and keep changing lives and keep transforming people's lives. Keep helping people... Flip the switch. Keep helping people get from where they were and coaching them to get to where they want to be, need to be, and deserve to be. Keep making millions of fucking dollars. Keep being a role model to my family and to my kids. But there's times when I will respond to them. It's on my page. I can respond to whatever I want to respond to and double delete and block whatever I feel like deleting and blocking. But apparently, that this was this guy's win in his day. Think about that. This is his win in his day by he already won by getting me to, re- egging me on to respond. So a grown man, this is a military veteran, won his win for the day. His victory for the fucking day was egging another grown man on to respond to his bullshit mess that he put on someone else's space on the internet. And that was his win. That was his win. Think about how fucking pathetic. Yes, it's sad. Yes, it does break your heart seeing military veterans like this, but just how pathetic this is that that's his win for the day. Some people would rather see you or me, would rather see you fail than see themselves succeed. I want you to wrap your fucking head around that one. Think of how much fuckery that is. Some people would rather see you fail than they would rather see themselves succeed. So if it meant, let's let's break this down, that they can go and have success and you can go have success, they wouldn't be happy with that. They would rather prefer them going and ruining your success without giving themselves success. They'd rather that neither of you have success than both of you have success. Because most likely if you're a hater, bitch-ass motherfucker like that, you're not going to have success on your own. So they'd rather see someone else fail than see themselves succeed. Think of how much self-hate that is. The number one person these bitch-ass hating motherfuckers are hating on is their damn self. Like, holy shit. They'd rather see you fail than they would rather see themselves succeed. How much self-fuckery, how much worse self-fuckery and self-sabotage could you possibly get than that? So I want to read you another post. This one's a good one. This is a good one. This is like an all-time classic. I've even, we've even talked about this on the, the show with the kids before, and we're going to re- talk about it on our podcast, come up with the kids and break it down. This is like a classic. I don't even remember the post that it was. Doesn't matter what post it was. I, I don't even remember. But it, it, the, the comment was, shit post, like saying it's a shit post of mine. If I were to meet you in person, I would beat your ass for having such a shit post. I would first punch you right in the peener. Not really sure what a peener is. I would first punch you right in the peener while you stagger to the ground like a cowardly dipshit. I would gather the attention of any passing bystanders to increase your humiliation. They would likely want to join in, but I will convince everybody to leave it to me. By this time, you will be getting back to your feet, but not for long. After receiving a perfectly executed tomahawk kick across your face, you will be instantly knocked out. While you are unconscious, everyone present will migrate to the parking lot to shit on your car. Like, there's not much on the internet that can make me laugh. But he's got, they would migrate to the parking lot to shit on my car. That is like fucking pure copywriting gold. Like, I want this motherfucker to write post me. This is a talented little bitch. And then he continues on. After everyone is done... We will share a laugh at your expense, then disband, and then moron in capitals. That's pure fucking gold. Like this is why I don't delete, just block and delete every one of them. I want to be, I want to befriend this motherfucker. I want more. Like I want more. I want to hear more of this. This is some creative shit. Like this is a wasted fucking talent. I'm dead serious with that. I am dead serious with that. Here's I want to give you, and, and that was just, I'm just want to randomly throw in some of those comments. You could see the kind of thing I was talking about, and that was also a military veteran. As a military veteran, because he made some other comments and other posts that pretty much, I mean, I don't know for sure, but the, the way that they're commenting and the things that they say, I'm assuming some of them are military veterans. Some I know for sure, but some assuming that they're military veterans. So another one, here was, there was, when I used to have gyms in New York, the haters were still there, people that see you succeed, people that, there's, it's, it's a wild thing. There's even people who, let's say they used to be, let's, Say if there was a hierarchy of, say, success or wealth or money or status. Let's say someone is above you and you're here and they hire you. Say they're very successful and they hire you as a personal trainer and you're a personal trainer and sometimes you get 
talked to and treated like a just a personal trainer. But as you start to develop yourself and build yourself and build your business, the next thing you know, you're making twice or triple with this person that hired you as a personal trainer that used to look down upon you and now you're making more money. They start to hate on you. They want to drag you down. They try to put you down because they see you surpassing them and some people cannot fucking handle that. Some people can't be happy for other people's success or other people, especially when they think that they are important or at some kind of high status level and see some lowly little bald fucking ugly little skinny white kid from New York personal trainer surpass them and they start hating on them. So there was this one client that I had in New York and this individual would would talk all this shit on the internet. They left the gym and would talk all this shit on the internet and threats on the internet and all kinds of shit. Just internet, just keyboard warrior flapping them gums. And you know what happened one time? I was at a at the mall, like this was probably a year after all this happened. It died out, block delete, motherfucker, never heard from again. So it's probably they're probably still talking shit, probably still hating years later as we just keep growing and get more successful and building blocks to more and more success and happiness and fulfillment to a higher calling and a lot of stuff. These motherfuckers are probably still hating on the internet. I don't know, because I block and delete some and you just never go back and you never check on it and don't really care. But about a year later, after blocking and deleting this motherfucker, talking shit about literally talking shit about my family, talking shit about my kids about the business, about our morals and ethics and how we run a business and accusing of all kinds of like horrible uh, things on the internet and just talking kind of shit and threatening. About a year later, I'm sitting there at, at, a, at a, a food place, uh, like a Middle Eastern, these halal food we like to get with the kids. We get the trays with the, with the gyros and all that other stuff, platters. So I'm looking up. It's a brand new place in the mall. This place just opened up. This is, I don't even know, almost... 10 years ago, by this point now, I don't even know, seven years ago. I'm looking up a thing. I'm there with the two kids, just me and the two kids, and I'm looking up, and I feel some energy to the side of me. Like someone, you know, you can feel like someone's looking at you or someone's there. You feel this vibe and this energy that, all right, what's going on to the side? But I'm trying to figure out the food and talking to the kids. It's a wee little different of a menu we're not used to. We're trying to figure out what food we want. And so I make the order of the food, and I stop and I look to my right. And it's this individual there with someone else, this one that was talking all this shit and threatening me on the internet, talking shit about my kids. Like at the time, my daughter was probably three, two years old. I don't even know. Maybe it was five, I don't know, six, seven years ago. I don't even know how, whatever. Numbers of matter. But young little kid talking shit about my kids and my, my, the Russian, my wife and myself and our business and all this stuff, threatening, physically threatening and all this other stuff. I see this motherfucker at this restaurant right next to me, because I could felt that energy that someone's looking at me. I look, and there you go, it's this motherfucker right there. And they say, oh, Steve, how you doing? Oh my God, the kids are getting so big and all this other stuff. All these pleasantries. We're pals, we're pals after all this stuff happened, after I blocked and deleted the motherfucker on the internet. And they introduce me to their person that's sitting next to them. It's their new boss of this new job they just got that they've been trying to get and it's their dream job of their life. And they're there getting lunch with their new boss in their first week of work at this dream job. Now, if I was a douchebag, dickhead, hating motherfucker, bitch ass like this individual, what I would have done and would have been pretty fucking funny to do, I would have said, hey, you know, I've been meaning to ask you this question. I'm glad I ran into you. Why were you threatening me on the internet and talking all this shit and talking stuff? Look at my talking shit about my kids that are right there that you knew. And why did you do this and that and my wife and call her this and this and, and tell me all these horrible things and all this other stuff and spread all this gossip and lies and hate and rumors and just toxic energy. I could have done all that in front of this new boss. Probably wouldn't have been a good look for this bitch ass motherfucker. You know what I did? What's up? How you doing? Oh, yeah, the kids are awesome. This place looks great. Looks like some great food here. Oh, I'm so glad you got that dream job. Sounds awesome. Hope everything goes well. See you soon. See you around. Because the, the, the way that you can get, and Marcus really is another quote of Marcus, or one of, the, one of the stoic philosophies, one of the quotes, I don't know what word for word, is something like, the best revenge you can get on your enemy is to not be like them. Why would I go sling mud with this dirty motherfucker so now it's just two dirty motherfuckers? You go sling your mud. You go play in the fucking mud like a dirty little pig you are. And I'm going to go over here, keep being fucking awesome, keep being a role model. There's also the saying, the wise philosopher Jay-Z said, don't never argue with a fool because from a distance, people can't tell who is who. You go argue with an idiot. All people see from a distance, two idiots arguing, two fools arguing. That's all they see. 
So that was just a, a, a real life example of actually running into a hater in such a unique situation. And it was wild how, how you really can elevate yourself above that. So really, these people just hate what they gave up on. And then they wonder why they're fucking fat and out of shape and broke and lack fulfillment. And they're spending all this time talking shit on the internet. If they would only put that same attention to detail and obsessiveness and time and effort and energy and enthusiasm and fucking passion into their own personal development, their own lives, their own self-mastery, their own business, their own career, they'd be fucking successful. But they just hate on other people. I get hate on talk to, because I'm yelling at people in a video. You shouldn't yell. You would never yell at me like that. I would Goldberg spear you. I get told that they don't like my shirt. Your shirt is ugly. Oh no. Boo hoo. Another grown man told me my shirt is like, listen, motherfucker, I got over that shit in the first grade from little bitch ass snot nosed little fucks like you talking about my shirt. I think I'm worried about some dude on the, and they really, and they really think they're getting to you because they egged you on. I already won because I egged you on. Like what? Grown man would would even talk like that. I can't even get it. Doesn't even make fucking sense. I one time on the same video, here's a fucking wild thing. Here's how haters are so fucking warped. On the same video, I got I got whatever sh- shit talked to on the same video. I got called skinny on this video. Oh, this skinny little dude yelling at people. And then the next one, oh, this guy's all roided out. I got told I was skinny and on roids. So either they're saying I got a bad batch of roids that was just a skinny motherfucker or they're just, they just have to scratch and claw to find anything to talk shit about and hate on you about. I've been called skinny by a fat person. It doesn't even make sense. How fuck a fat motherfucker gonna tell me I'm skinny? No shit, I'm skinny and you're fat. I'd rather walk around being skinny than fucking fat with man tits and you're carrying a gun, and you can't even get your gun, and you get shot because your fucking fats, of roll, roll fats are hanging over, the lip is hanging over, and when you run it, like, makes those weird noises. Yeah. It was called skinny and fat, or skinny and on steroids in the same freaking video. And it's, we go to the beach. We were working out at the beach. This was just, and this was here just recently in California, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. We're working out at the beach. We're doing kettlebells, doing some medicine ball slams, and two different, two different things happen to this same workout. First, one group walks by. It's a bunch of drunk, fat, like teenagers, college kids, maybe all, all overweight. Every one of them overweight. None of them fit. And this is middle of the summer, like summer season. Time to be fucking ripped and stand out and be at your peak. You really should be at your peak all year round, but that's besides the point. And they're walking by and, you, and they're not saying anything, but you see them mocking the movements that we're doing. Like literally you get made fun of for exercising and training and being with your family and being in shape. And if you have abs, you're on steroids. If you're skinny, you must have cancer or something or you're sick. Or why are you skinny? People say, oh my God, you lost all this weight. Are you, are you okay? Are you on chemotherapy or something? No, motherfucker. It's called having some discipline. And yes, you can get ripped and build muscle and be lean without steroids. It's rare these days, but it is fucking possible. But so that first group is, is mocking and making fun of the actual exercise. Then another dude walks by, drinking his fucking thing, like with some cheese fries or something, walking by. And I almost wanted to put my shirt on. You're almost embarrassed to take your shirt off at the beach if you have any muscle or if you have even an ab sticking out. An ab muscle, you're embarrassed. It's, it's fucking wild. It's like the twilight zone out there where you have to be embarrassed for being in shape and you get made fun of by fat people for being in shape. Or you're told you're skinny by a fat motherfucker. So his family walks by and, and the kids are with me and we talk about this all the time. We literally quote this motherfucker years later. Like this is what we're talking about, like some gold sometimes and, and just memorable experiences. This dude walks by, says, oh, I wish I was in shape like that. I wish I was in shape like that. My kids were like mind blown. Like well, you wish you were in shape? You can't wish that fat off your body and you're holding some fucking chili cheese fries in your hand with a diet coat because you're apparently on a fucking diet, but you wish you were in shape? You wish you had abs like that? You wish you had the motivation to go and work out on the beach? Instead, you're sitting there stuffing your fucking face, your pie hole? Like, holy shit. Then even on the project, people talk about the project saying that, that, that those people in the project should just join the military. We get military veterans saying these are just a bunch of wannabe military guys. They should have joined... They should go join the military. Well, listen, motherfucker, some people don't want to go and need to go away for four years looking for an experience. Looking, and, and on top of that, probably 20% of the project graduates that we have 
are some form of military veteran, even some that were in special operations, some that are even active duty still in the military. We have re- we've had retired firefighters, police officers, paramedics, also active duty firefighter, police officer, paramedics, all as project graduates. But then they say, oh, you should just go to boot, real boot camp. All these people who couldn't cut it in the military. So they're not allowed to go do hard shit. They're not allowed to train hard and anything you do or you can't have any discipline or work on your personal development or anything like that. Because if you do that, oh, you should just go join the Marines. Just like I shouldn't mention being a Marine because I got out before 9-11, before it even happened. Because I have a time machine. I can say, oh, some dude with a towel, uh, a, a thing is going to blow up the, the things and whatever. And of course, these are always from private accounts, always from fucking losers. They threaten to kick your ass and, and they, oh, what is the context of this video? Motherfucker, I don't owe you context. You're coming onto my page. Just, just read the, first of all, read the caption. Most of the times, the caption explains exactly what's going on, but they'll see just a video. Oh my God, you'll never talk to me like that. Oh, why are you doing this? You're, you should just, these people should just join the military. But they won't even read the fuck. Like, did you even read the caption, motherfucker? I know it's more than a sentence, and that's a little more of your attention span because you have the attention span of a fucking doorknob, but did you even read the fucking caption? Like, let's start the conversation there. Let's start there. Do they think that, like they're entitled, they think they need, that you owe them an explanation or you owe them like something to make them feel better, like they're entitled to it. Do they really think you're going to fucking stop? Stop doing what you're doing? Stop stop making money? Stop being fucking awesome? On top of that, a lot of what we do is, is we do military fundraisers all the time with a lot of the stuff we do. How much are they donating to military fundraisers every year? What are they doing to make an impact every day? Other than commenting on the internet from their fucking private account in, in their grandmama's basement with their tidy whities on, their Star Wars t-shirt, and little cheese little stains drop and the rest on their fucking gut and their man tits. Because that shit doesn't count as making an impact on the world. Same as guys who are obsessed with sports and football teams and all this other stuff. The same thing. And again, the sad part is this is coming from fucking veterans. Coming from other veterans. People who I would consider brothers, other Marines. The thing is, there's people out there you could talk to still, motherfucker. And listen, I am even still here to talk to you. I'll get on the phone with any one of those little hater motherfuckers. And, you know, sometimes they just want to talk. Probably help them out somewhere. Talk to them. Save them from this this chaos. Save them from their fucking selves. Because somewhere, brother, you lost your fucking way. And there are still some people out here will still help you. You don't want to talk to me because I'm a fucking pogue, whatever. You go talk to someone or come and talk to me, whatever it is. And you know what? This is why we created the project. This is why I do all the coaching programs I have to weaponize everything. We weaponize this stuff. Don't, don't give a fuck what other people think about you, the haters that don't matter. But there is a caveat to that. Yeah. You could say, Oh, don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about you. But you absolutely, those are, you shouldn't give a fuck what people think about you, the people that don't matter. But you absolutely should give a fuck what the people about think about you that do matter. And this is why we started, this is why we created the project for men like this. Problem is, the men that need this stuff the most a lot of times will not go forward because their ego is too big and they're know it alls and they've already given up on themselves. So they won't even go to that next level of doing something like the project. But that's why we created the project for men that want to level up and become even better husbands, even better fathers, even better humans, even better motherfucking men. So you could, they could weaponize everything, weaponize the experience you have in your life. These, these dudes should be weaponizing the experience and the knowledge and the expertise that they got in the military instead of just bitching and hating on it, on seeing other successful people. Success leaves clues. Like, motherfucker, stop bitching. Pick up the phone and ask me, how did I do what I did? How am I using what I learned to build a career, to build businesses, to live a fucking awesome life, a freak, freedom, ideal lifestyle? Like, ask how I did it, not talk shit about it. Like, you're just, that's just fucking stupid. That is just stupid. So, if you feel like you are in a certain place and not where you want to be in life, don't be one of these fucking haters. Go and look at the people doing it. Success leaves clues. Ask them how they did it. Reach out to me. I will. Help, I can help you out. Let you help you break it down so you can start living that ideal freak freedom lifestyle that you always wanted to live, that you need to live, that you fucking deserve to live, that you and your family and your people and your kids deserve to be a part of. Don't be one of those hater motherfuckers. Don't give a fuck what the people matter. That don't don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck what the people think that don't matter. But do give a fuck what the people think that do matter. 
Wave your fucking freak flag high in the sky, stamp it in the ground, and attract the like-minded freaks like yourself, and let those fucking haters go that away. Get the fuck out of here. Beat it. I got more important shit to do. I ain't got time for that. Unless it's overly entertaining and I could share it on a show like this or talk about it and make fun of it and talk shit with my kids. Other than that, get the fuck out of here. Keep it moving. Don't be one of those people. But anyway, this is, this is just some examples of how to deal with, how to think about, how to process the haters that are out there. And again, I'm going to go back to what we started with. If you want to put yourself out there, if you want to be successful in this world, if you're going to be going online and you want to be an influencer, you want to be successful, you want to make some money, if you're going to put yourself out there, you need to have thick motherfucking skin. Let that be the biggest lesson of this entire thing. And then weaponize everything. Weaponize everything. And in the process of being yourself, don't be a fucking asshole. That's what I want to leave you with on that. Be your freak self, but don't be an asshole. Don't be a fucking hater. Don't be sitting there talking shit on other people's stuff. Go ask them how they did it. How can they help you get out of this funk you're in, dig yourself out of this hole you dug yourself in? Go ask for help. Stop suffering in silence. That's what haters are doing. Haters are just men that are suffering in silence. Let's talk. Pick up the phone. I'll, I'll talk to any, every single one of you. I will make time to talk to every single one of you and see what we could do, how we could dig out of this bitch-ass funk that you're in. I've seen worse than that, and I've seen people dig out worse holes than these people that are going to tomahawk kick me across the fucking face and shit in my car. That is hysterical shit, by the way. If that wasn't worth this, listening to this episode, I don't know what is. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up here for the Steve Eckert Podcast, episode number five, talking all about the haters, the, the veteran on veteran hate. Leave your comments down below. What do you think about it? Have you experienced, what kind of ex hate have you experienced online? What kind of hate have you experienced if you're a military veteran? I want to hear your stories. I want to hear your examples. Put them in the comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe and share this video with your veteran friends, with your team, with your people, and share it with someone who needs to hear this kind of stuff. And if you need help with anything, reach out at any time. Check the links down below. We can set up a call and talk about any type of coaching or the project that will help you unfuck yourself, kill that inner bitch, and unleash the beast that you're meant to be. I will see you next time. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.